Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome back to the uh, Sony Trinitron KV1942R. We're going to start yanking boards today, and the first one we're going to start with is the power supply board. I pretty much work from the power supply board downwards because if the power supply ain't working right, well, nothing else is going to work right. So here is our power supply board. Uh, it's fairly straightforward to release it. I've made a map as to where all the connectors are going to go. And that's really important to do because you can't always trust the silk screening and you can't trust your memory always. I always try to make a map of things. Uh, and then I also use that map to note the capacitors and their polarity and their positions. Because, again, I don't trust my own memory and I've had problems putting things back together when my memory fails. So I also take the time because the boards are marked F4 for this connector, F5 for this connector, etc. And I will write on them. So this is F4. Sometimes they're marked by the factory. Flip it over. That one's got a mark from the factory, but not all of them are. Like this one here, F5. That's got a mark on it. That's nice. And they're noted where they go. So, let me zoom in here. If I can. The camera wants to bust free from my hands here. Let's tighten things up a little. Alright. So basically, we're going to yank this one out. I'm going to come back here. Pull this guy out. You are F3. Yep, that's noted. F8. I think that's from your power switch. F2, F1. This one back here is going to be tricky to get. I'm going to disconnect my CRT board so I can get my hand back there easier. Let's see if I can yank this one up. There we go. Alright, and these have already been released. So now it's a matter of taking the board loose. Okay, two screws are out, and then lift up and pull back at an angle. Now we've still got something here attached that's soldered directly to the board. Where does that go? Let's see here. Oh, that goes to the IF board which is on the other side. You can't see it's out of view. So bear with me while I undo the wire wraps. Let's see if we can't get this one free. There's a wire wrap back here. Okay, and then there's a little zip tie thing. <sighs> Usually hemostats gets these things apart. First you ink up on it to get the uh, little beads in the center. If it'll let me... It's probably going to break. Is it going to break? Yep, it broke. Alright, so... I'm just going to cut this one out, and if I have to, replace it later. And now, come on, come on out, wrapped up in eight million other things. 
All right, so that should free that board. Oh, I've got another one here. Let's see where this one goes. Nope, that's not for that. Feel where that goes. Does it go to the front? Nope, go somewhere else. Let's see where this one goes. This one goes over to this board. So let me unwrap that. And let's see, this one's D5. We'll yank that out. Let's try this again. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Almost. Oh, and then we've got, what is this? This is your AC line on the bottom here. I'll show you that in a minute. Let me just get this out of here. I'm going to have to redress all these wires when I put these back in here, but that's just how it is. Okie dokie. Now the last thing we got going on is the ACN, which they have conveniently wrapped here. I hate wire wraps. I don't have a wire wrap tool, so we're just going to have to get some pliers here and untwist these and then solder them back in later on. So it says AC in here, AC in here. I'm just going to highlight these so that they stand out. And I usually take a pair of flat build pliers, start at the top where the uh, curl is, and then we just go around here and loosen it up until it comes off the shaft. Go. Let's do the other one here. Isn't this fun? I hate wire wraps. There's a speedy way to do it. And the board's out. Power supply board's out. We got a nice big gaping hole there in the chassis. And we got a nice power supply board here to go over. All right. So let's get the TV off the bench so that we have more room to work on the power supply board. So there is our power supply board. Doesn't look uh, like there's too much to it. Right? Super easy, huh? Alright, well let's uh, see what we're up against here. Alright, for all of you watching at home, I'm going to try to orient the camera in a different position than I normally do because I want uh, to give you guys a better overhead view of what's going on here. So, as I noted before, I made a map as to uh, where all this stuff goes. And so, when I make a map, trying to figure out the better lighting of everything here, I also draw out where the capacitors are, and their polarity, and their value because I don't trust silk screening on the board and I have put myself in errors making mistakes and uh, making it so that parts go in backwards and then things blow up and I'm not really keen on that so I'm just gonna make a little map here of where all the capacitors go big one here I highly doubt is bad. It's usually the smaller Matsushita stuff. These ones usually last a fairly long time. I'm not going to worry about that one. But all these little purple bastards here, these all got to go away. And then we got to redo all the soldering on the board because that's a problem. So this guy 
3.3 at 160. That's probably your BBOO's cap. And let's see, over here, these are both 4.7 at 250. This guy here is a 10 at 160. Actually, the negative's over here, not at the back. And then we got a, well, let's see here. Nope, that was wrong. That's this guy here. See how I almost made a mistake? 4.7 at 25 volts. This is the 10 at 160. And then this is a 4.7 at 160. And this one is a 0.47 at 50. This one over here is a 4.7 at 50. And let's see here. This is a 560 at 200 volt, although I don't think I'll be changing that. Uh, very rarely do these ever screw up and the vent hole hasn't been broken open and it's not leaking electrolyte that I can tell. Maybe we'll pull it up. One of those is a dummy lug too. So this is the, uh, the negatives over here, positives over here. We'll write it down just in case. It says 560 at 200. Now, obviously, I'm going to need to make a parts list because I nominally don't have all these high voltage caps on hand. Um, but yeah, so you got to make all these. I make a map here so that I know exactly what I need to do as far as pulling these out. So now the next thing to do is to actually get cracking on desoldering all these. And in that case, what we do is get our solder wick. And just to speed things up, I'm going to mark where these are in red, where all the capacitors are that I'm taking out. Mark them in red. That will make for quick and easy desoldering. There's an audio section there too, apparently. Got that one marked and that one marked. Got those two marked. And then of course the big bad boy here. And yeah, maybe we'll just take him out. Why not? So what I'll do is grab the solder wick. Everybody keeps telling me I should get a desoldering iron, but I've liked doing it this way for so many years. Why not? And we just wick away the old solder. And this uh, Kimwick rosin solder works really, our desoldering braid works really well. There it is. It's the 10-50L. Good stuff. And make sure you got a nice hot iron. I'm using a 60 watt iron. Or maybe it's a 50 watt. Yeah, I don't remember. It's hot enough. It's a hacko. It's the FX880, which although isn't cheap, is a great soldering iron. If you really want to get into board rework and messing with this stuff, you want a good soldering iron, buy that.
that's why I put the red marks on them so that I can speedily unsolder everything and get it out let's see and I guess we'll do the giant one and get a reamer and clean out my solder bulb and then we'll uh, heat this pin Doesn't help that the board tilts forward. I'm going to put something behind it to brace it, like my finger here. Soldering, desoldering bulb gets most of it. And we just make sure it's nice and clean with the uh, wick. Gosh, I think the mail's here. Yep, mail's here. Okay, okay. Almost got this guy desoldered. Okay, yep, still got a little bit down here. Ugh. Hold still, damn it. Okay. Cut off the excess braid and toss it. Okay. Now we can flip the board up and start yanking caps out. I got a map of where they go, so it doesn't matter. These things were starting to pee. Never leave these things in here, they're trouble. Hmm, did I miss one? Yeah, I did. I didn't mark this guy here. That's going to be this guy. All right. Okay, and that's our 4.7 to 25. All right, so there's your main electrolytic. No bulge here. Looks like it's in good shape. We can test it, or we can replace it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go over this board. And the majority of this really should be resoldered. Because if you don't, it always comes back. Or in my case, I'll have to open it again. See if uh, side lighting is any better. Yeah, it's a little better. Lighting on this bench sucks. I don't have any good overhead lighting in this area of the store, so. We're just going to go to town on resoldering this board. Because Sony wave soldering is terrible and it loves to fail. Now there was a Sony factory here in San Diego on Balboa Avenue, which they closed a number of years ago. And people are telling me that there's a good chance that this may have been actually made here, which would be cool. Don't know that with certainty. I think that would be neat to have a local set. Well, 
wonder if there's a way to find that out based on the serial number or something. Maybe somebody knows. B voltage adjustment. I like how they label everything on the boards. It's just so nice. Really touchy soldering on this uh, driver transistor for the regulator. Remember how we could just smack it and it would do weird stuff? So we're more or less going to have to resolder all of these boards. Because I can just see just about every connection here on the board. The camera really doesn't reveal it all that well. It has a nice crystallized solder on it. Which pretty much means it's going to fail once it heats up. Let's go. That's just the test point. Let's solder that back in later. Let's see. I think I went over these already. Yeah. Potentiometer adjustment. This is really bad over here. Another test point. See, with a good hot iron, you can do this work really quickly. And if you're wondering what solder I'm using, it's uh, Kester. Uh, 0.031, 60-40. Might imagine I buy the big rolls. It's usually a pound, pound of solder. I go through it really quick. I probably work on about 15 to 20 machines a week. Sometimes more. Come on, get up in there. Another test point. Yeah, let's not make solder bridges. That would be real fun. Turn the set on. Bang! Whoops. I always add new solder. I never just reflow what's there. Just reflowing what's there is... Uh, Asking for trouble. Just add new solder. Another test point. Oh, this is the ACN. Tells you where to put the black and the white. Black being the hot, white being the neutral. Although I don't even remember if this uh, set uses a polarized cord or not. I don't think it does. So how would you know? You're plugging it in. Choke. I think this is a little choke. Noise suppression device of some kind. Okay, let's go over here to the audio section. You know, surprisingly, out of all the stuff that we looked at in the first video, this board is actually in the nicest condition. Some models, the power supply is like the worst. 
But on this, it actually is probably the nicest looking board in the set. The rest of them all have caught awful solder, but this one's just aging. It's just showing early signs of death rather than I've died three times already. Please uh, make sure I don't respawn. Isn't this exciting? Alright, let's come back up here. It's for your speaker. This is apparently for your power switch, or so it says. It's nice that they tell you, because if you were an idiot and you didn't make a diagram, at least it tells you which goes where. That's very nice. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see, up here, up here. Okay. Trying to double check and look over this board to see if there's anything I missed. This one I'm not really happy with. Da, 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 da. There's this one here I'm not too happy with. And you got these two here that I didn't solder yet. Okay. This one here could be a little better. This one here could be a little better. This here, this here, this here could be better, this here could be better, and this one for the B adjustment. You should clean that B voltage adjustment pot too, uh, it will save you some trouble. I'm going to add a little solder to these guys here. That could be better. Alright. And there was a test point that dropped out. There it is. Right there, your B voltage test point. This guy here that's just dangling by a thread. I'm going to see if I can reinstall this. stay there? Well then. I have to clamp onto it with some hemostats so it doesn't move around. And then put a big old blob of solder in my iron and quickly transfer it to the test point here. And in come the phone calls. Let me grab the phone and then uh, we'll get back to this. Okay, so obviously there's going to be some curiosity here. These capacitors that we yanked out, are they any good? And since the set was just barely surviving, I'm going to guess that most of them aren't. And since a lot of them are starting to ooze, probably even less so. So what we're going to do, if it will cooperate with me, focus, focus. Okay, I'm just going to test a couple of these guys here. It's 4.7. Yeah, you're a little tired. Where are you? You're a 10. Come on. That 10's open. Oh, there we go. Nope, that was just me shorting my probes together. So that 10 is open. Let's see. Here another 4.7 at 250. Okay. 
You're in better shape than the last one was, but not by much. 4.7 at 160. It's hard to hold these things. Interesting. Wonder if this is uh, 4.7 microfarad should not measure better than about a, a 2 or a 1.5. That's almost like a short. Interesting. Here's a 3.3 3 at 160. Yeah, why does that one measure so high? Shouldn't. These 0 .04, uh, 0.47s don't register for hell all. And that one's registering like it's two microfarad. So probably super leaky. 4.7. Yeah, these are all registering very, very low ESR for what they are. So it makes me wonder. Yeah, these are all registering like really low ESR. And they shouldn't. So... Just for grins and giggles, we're going to get a, a VOM that puts about 25 volts across the device and see if there's any leakage. Alright, so in that regard we have the RCA WV519A, which is a very nice old meter. So I'm going to do this uh, super high or super low ESR 4.7 at 160. And i got to be careful not to touch both leads as to create a current path. And let's see how this one charges up. We should get a steady charge to infinity. And so far, so good. Looks like it's going to do its thing. Whoa. Yeah, I haven't moved the uh, leads here. So this thing does have a short. Look at that. Haven't moved the leads. Focus, come on, focus. See, haven't moved the leads. It's got a nice, uh, that's a short circuit. All right. That's about a 20K ohm resistor, according to the meter. So here's another one. Here's a 3.3 3 at 160. Now let's touch our meter leads to this. This one's got a steady charge. Looks like this one's charging up. Staying steady there at about uh, 400k stay steady there at about 400k but it still is rising so that's tells you that it's probably usable and then we've got this 4.7 at 50 Let's see what happens when I touch my meter leads here that should charge up fairly fast slow charge very slow and we're kinda coming to a halt here so that tells you that this one's leaky too and let's do the point four seven this should charge really fast if it's good yeah that's not so great either alright skip on to the next one here's a four point seven at 25 volts. This is about what the meter puts out, so we're going to see it at its operating voltage. It's charging up nice and smooth. It's slowing down again, though. So, a lot of these old electrolytics are just 
tired. Very tired. Here's a 4.7 at 250 we haven't checked yet. It's charging up at least. Starting to slow down though. Now mind you, I'm not physically touching the meter lead, so my body isn't an influence. You can see here that we've got a leaky one. There's another 4.7 at 250. Yep. Starting to slow down a little. Yeah, it's pretty much stopped there. Not good. 10 at 160. So all these, I'm not even going to wait for that one. Uh, here's the main power supply filter. Now this one's going to take a really long time to charge because, well, it's a big value. Let's turn it down a little bit. It does charge up there. Yeah. I'm going to replace it just because it's charging up so slow. I mean, it's a 560 microfarad, so probably would take some time. Just as a comparison, let's get a, a 470. Here's a cheapy uh, 470 at 160. And it's going to take a long time to charge because it's a big value. So there's a fair chance that that cap's probably okay, but I got it apart. Why not just replace it? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make my list of stuff that I need for this board. And then uh, we'll order it. All right, so I got all my values written down for the power supply board. I have some of these. Yeah. I have some of these. I know I have the, the low value, the 0.47, the 4.7, the 25, and 50. Uh, might have the 10, might have the 3.3. Let me go take a look and see real quick. So amazingly, I do have the 4.7s. I do have the 10. I do have the 3.3. So that's cool. Um, ba -ba 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 yeah. What I don't have is the giant uh, 560, which is the closest I think is going to be a 680 microfarad. I think that's really as close as I'm going to get. But uh, yeah, um, I think what I'll do is we'll pop these guys in here real quick, just the ones that I do have. Yeah, so that would be, let's see here, a 10 microfarad at 160. These are actually a little bit higher voltage, but not going to matter too much. So, yeah, we're going to do the 10 at 160. Pop this guy in here. Let's see if I can shed some light on this for you all. So I bend, I bend the leads over on the bottom like that so that they kind of stay in place because they're not going to want to. And let's see here. What else do I got? We got the 4.7s. 4.7 high voltage to 160. It's going to be next to the uh, 10 there. Pop that guy in. Okay, put you back. I'm amazed I had these. And then let's see, the 3.3s. 
I got one of them down here. Here. Here, 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 here. And then let's see. More uh, 4.7 uh, 250. 4.7 at 250. I'm just going to have enough of this. Woohoo! Let's go ahead and put that in there. And the leads out so they don't go nowhere. Alright, so let me make some notes here real quick. Let's see, I got this in, I got this in, I got this in, I got this in. All right, so the next thing, we're going to do our uh, 4.7, 25, and 50. Move this over here. All right, so 4.7s. The 4.7 at 50 goes up here. And then the 4.7 at 25, doo -doo 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 -doo. that goes over here. All right. And then the 0.47, which I yanked, goes over here. I think that's it. There's Mark stuff down here. Okay, we got that, we got that, we got that. Alright, so that really just leaves the uh, big power supply cap. So let me go ahead and solder these guys in. And in all honesty, I think I'm just going to put the power supply cap back in. It tests okay to me. And then we can actually put the board back in and go on to the next thing. A lovely solder smoke. Don't want you don't want you to breathe that. I think the rosin smoke is more harmful to you than the uh, lead itself. I can't really work with gloves and solder, so when I'm done with this, I'm just going to wash my hands really well. All right. Let's look over the board here and make sure that we didn't uh, miss any solders or anything like that. Those are all soldered in nice and happy. So, I'm going to get my cutters and just trim all this stuff off. Can't seem to not bump the camera today. Clip all these off. making sure that none of the leads of these devices touch anything else. Okie dokie. And then we're just going to put the uh, main power supply filter back in. I think it's okay. And that way I don't have to make a part order for one capacitor. I haven't gone over the other boards yet to see what I need, but... I'm going 
double check my soldering, make sure there's no solder bridges or anything that could uh, make for a bad day. There's that one connection back there I'm not very happy with. This guy right here. going alrighty so this is really ready to go back in now this is definitely not going to be fix everything but this is certainly something that we needed to attend to this is one of many boards that's going to get yanked out and reworked so this one's going to go back into the television and then we'll uh, yank the next one out and I think the next one's going to be the uh, deflection board driver board and then maybe uh, we'll work on the uh, final output board that has the horizontal out damper all EHT all that stuff so yeah uh, next video we'll get this back into the set and we'll pull the next board out and uh, we'll go from there so hope you guys enjoyed this episode of redoing the power supply board next episode we'll pop this back in and choose another board to pull out thanks for watching